So buprenorphine sounds like a great idea if opioids are needed in the treatment of moderate to severe restless leg syndrome. But in 2023, there are so many different forms of buprenorphine. What should be done regarding the dosages and formulations for restless leg syndrome? I'm Dr. Andy Burkowski of Relax Health, and this week's topic is all about the different forms of buprenorphine. There are many different forms of buprenorphine. The three main ones that would be used for restless leg syndrome would be the patch, uh, the uh, buprenorphine that dissolves under the tongue or sublingual, uh, or the buprenorphine that dissolves between the cheek and the gum, also called the buccal film of buprenorphine. So let's talk about each one uh, individually. The most common one is going to be more financially driven, and, and that's going to be the form that goes under the tongue, and that, that's the strongest form. That, that one is called Suboxone. And Suboxone, there are other brands like Zubsolve, which have slightly different ratios, but are, are generally considered the same as Suboxone. And then the, the generic form of buprenorphine, which is used to be called Subutex uh, in terms of the brand name. But Suboxone is gonna be the most, most common one. It comes in a film and a tablet. The reason the film is used more for restless leg syndrome is because the overall strength of Suboxone is quite strong because it's really designed for opioid use disorder. So for conditions that involve pain or sensation like restless leg syndrome, most patients are gonna take a very low dose of Suboxone. In fact, uh, often the film and cutting the film into small pieces such as maybe an eighth of a film or a quarter of the film the, the film dissolves under the tongue and it comes with naloxone. The, the naloxone is not absorbed significantly through the tongue, but it really prevents anybody from stealing it and breaking it down and, and injecting it into the bloodstream. So the naloxone part of the suboxone is pretty much irrelevant to somebody with restless leg syndrome if they're taking it uh, under the tongue. The drug gets into the system maybe over half hour, say, and it lasts for long period of time. So it's a long acting drug. The half-life is 25 hours in that neighborhood, one to two days. So over the course of five days, the drug builds up in the system. And if the individual takes it every evening, it starts to take effect. And that effect is realized after about five days before the dose should be changed. So most patients with moderate to severe restless leg syndrome may start off with an eighth of a film or even a quarter film of the two milligram buprenorphine, whether it's tablets or uh, film. So the advantage of that form, particularly the Suboxone, is that it's more generic. It, it could be more affordable to people if not covered by insurance. So for out-of-pocket costs, it's the lowest. On the other hand, it's a very strong dose. So you've got to involve uh, cutting the thing into pieces and taking a small amount. So a more practical form is in the U.S. called Belbuca, which is a buccal film, meaning it goes between the cheek and gum. Uh, similar properties uh, to Suboxone, just different in terms of the strength. So the, the Belbuca film, typically patients will start off with 75 micrograms and work their way up every five days by increments of 75. Belbuca is a brand name drug. It's more expensive, particularly if insurance will not uh, reimburse it for restless leg syndrome. So the uh, Belbuca is more flexible because it's a lower dose. There's no equivalent, so you can't compare 75 micrograms of Belbuca to 2,000 micrograms of Suboxone. Uh, but generally, one film of Suboxone in restless legs of two milligrams might be similar to 450 micrograms of Belbuca. But these are very rough estimates uh, based on clinical experience uh, from restless leg syndrome. Uh, the, the third form that's commonly used in restless leg syndrome is the Butrans patch. So this is a patch that an individual put on their skin. It's switched out every seven days, and it, it delivers a steady amount of buprenorphine through the skin. It comes in very low doses, like five micrograms per hour. And so maybe five micrograms per hour is maybe like taking an eighth or a sixteenth of a two milligram Suboxone film. But again, there's no good studies showing how these are equivalent. But generally, patients would start with 5 micrograms per hour, and then after a week or two, they could go to 7.5, 5.5, 5.6, 5.7, 5.8, 5.9, 5.10, 5.11, 5.12, 5.13, 5.14, 5.15, 5.16, 5.17, 5.18, 
or 10 micrograms per hour. The advantage of the patch is most patients after three days get a stable amount of the drug 24 seven, so there's no ups and downs from the medication. The disadvantage is that it comes through a patch and it could cause things like skin irritation and redness, soreness that the medications through the mouth uh, do not cause. There are other forms of buprenorphine, as I mentioned, different uh, brands, but it's generally going to fall into one of these three categories. So what works best for the individual is what type of strength they need to treat their restless leg syndrome. Maybe if they have insurance that might pay for it, which form is preferred so that it's more cost effective. Uh, but in general, all three of these forms should work fairly well in the treatment of moderate to severe restless leg syndrome. And due to the immense benefits of buprenorphine other, compared to other opioids, these forms of buprenorphine should all be considered in addition to all of the other opioids when it comes to restless leg syndrome. Also of note with regard to the sublingual films or tablets like Suboxone, it does not require special DEA licensing to be prescribed. In fact, the special DEA licensing had been for opioid use disorder. Now that's been eliminated. But for any type of pain condition or restless leg syndrome, it can always be provided off-label for restless leg syndrome. So any physician with a DEA license can prescribe these medications no matter what form they're in. And that seems to be a point of confusion uh, for a lot of patients that there are some forms that can be prescribed, but others require a special license. That used to be true, but it was never true for pain conditions and restless legs. That's only true for opioid use disorder. And we're not talking about that condition when we're talking about restless legs syndrome. So as always, this is for general medical information purposes only. It does not constitute the practice of medicine. All advice regarding buprenorphine and other, any other management of restless leg syndrome should be made under direct medical supervision. And as always, one of the keys to sleeping well is to relax.